Hello and welcome to the big picture. The eagerness of the NDA government to push the insurance laws amendment bill allowing the hike of FDI from 26% to 49% is facing stiff resistance. The Congress and some of the opposition parties have demanded that the bill be sent to the Joint Select Committee as the amendments proposed by the NDA government needs a relook. Meanwhile, though the Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said that he was only taking forward what the UPA government had proposed, he has resisted sending it to a select committee and instead asked the opposition to vote against it if necessary. He has also hinted at a joint session of the parliament, if necessary, to get the bill passed. Are the amendments proposed by the NDA government similar to the ones proposed by the UPA government or are there some substantive amendments which are a departure from the UPA bill? If that is so, is it necessary for the bill to go to a select committee or should the bill be passed in present form with minor changes as suggested by the NDA? With NDA government not having a majority in the Raj Sabha, how will it face this first legisl legislative test? We will discuss all this today with J.D. Seelam, former Union Minister of State for Finance and a Congress MP, Rita Pratha Banerjee, CPIM MP in the Raj Sabha, and Paranjoy Goa Takurta, Senior Economic Analyst and Journalist. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Seelam, the, the question is that why is the Congress now, after having you know, proposed these amendments to the bill as far back as 2008, sent it to a standing committee in, which gave a report in 2011, now is saying that we, we need to have a relook again? Look, it's not the you know, Congress, it's, it's a country. The Congress government has laid the strong foundations for a sound economy. And they have gone on record before the elections that they have emptied the uh, treasurer, treasury, they have done nonsense, they have done complete wrath and they gave uh, as if they are going to improve the country's whole economic uh, scenario. But look at the budget, whatever Mr. Dambaram has said, no, but has been said, and I'm saying this is exactly, this is an age-old act, 2008 bill. And between 2008 and 2014, much has flown in the economic sector. I think the standing committee had made certain recommendations and this government came up with certain amendments. I think the nation needs to know what are the contents. That's why I think it's fair that it's only not the Congress is not against the bill. We are not against the bill. We are for the bill. But we need to know certain basic, uh, you know, fundamental, which makes a lot of difference have been suggested. They have to be looked into. For instance, as you rightly said, the definitional in nature, the definition of investments. They have added what is called FII, which is a loose money. Chidambaram, Mr. Chidambaram, I am sure, uh, would definitely think what we proposed as a Minister of State, I remember, though I was not looking after the insurance, but I was looking after the tax aspect, but I still knew that FDI is the solid money. That's where we need to concentrate. That's the philosophy of uh, the UPA. That's number one. Number two, one second, there are other aspects no, like... One second. No, we'll yeah. come to the other aspect. One second. I just want to you know, point out what is the exact nature of the amendments which, which are different from yours and uh, from the UPAs and now the NDA. The UPA government had said that shareholding by a foreign company, direct and indirect, should not exceed 49% of paid up capital of an Indian insurance company. Which meant that earlier it was 26%, now you're raising it to 49%. You have, no, you have no problem as far as the raising of the FDI is concerned because you yourself had proposed it. <coughs> Sorry. The, what is being proposed now, and I am just reading it, shareholding of foreign investors, including FIIs. This was not there in the... This was not there. It, it was not there. Including not FIIs should not exceed 49% of paid-up capital of an Indian insurance company, which is Indian-owned and controlled as per the prescribed manner. Okay, Rito Brato. Is this the major uh, objection which you people have to this uh, to these amendment, uh, well, amendment couple bill? Of subjects, couple of other we issues are also the, yeah. other thing because okay. this seems to be the major objection which uh, your party also seems to be having. Yes. See, we have been consistent. In 2008 also, we have consistently opposed this and now we are opposing it. Our position has been fixed. There is no change in position. And when... You are, you are opposed to the yeah. entire concept of raising, hiking the yes, FDI. Yes, we are against FDI. You don't want FDI? No. Okay. In the insurance sector, we don't want it. This bill, basically, what has been proposed, uh, this is aimed at raising the FDI to 49% and also allowing foreign reinsurance companies to open their branches in India. Now, basically, 
we believe that this is detrimental to the national interest, particularly in the background of the global financial crisis and the accompanying recession. In 2008, this was proposed, we have objected it. Now, when this 49% thing has come up, now this will, this 49% proposal will further de deregulate the financial sector in our country. Now, we believe that the need of the hour is to further strengthen the regulation in the background of this global crisis. Now, when this global financial meltdown, in 2008, it was also there. Now, in this global financial meltdown, if you look into it, it has actually ignited by reckless and irresponsible speculation. We have been consistently telling you, that. You think this that, is, you know, especially, the, the, see, first, the UPA government's amendment said that FDI, which did not mention FIS, th that is foreign institutional in investor, which means that people can even buy stocks, uh, you know, instead of you uh, see, investing. You see, the experience worldwide. If you look into USA, this AIG experience, that is the biggest company that has gone... Bankrupt. Now, public funds is being used to bail out the fat cats, is being used to bail out the corporates. Now, speculation led to this entire global financial meltdown. It destroyed capital base of financial giants like this company. Sporties have been there. Other companies have been there. The I ING has been there. Now, they are surviving on bailouts. Now, with this proposal, you are aiming to open up the Indian market. Basically, this is a additional bailout stimulus packages for these big corporates. Okay, they have that has been. Silam, do you? System. I mean, they have a more fundamental objection than you have. How do you react to that? Because you, no, I think you see, as far as you, UPA or the Congress and the BJP is concerned, on this, you fundamentally there doesn't seem to be much difference except now these differences which are coming out as far as the FI are concerned. No, I. I would he says that you know don't bring FDI also into the in, into. Insurance. I think I think uh, there is the, there are other parties also. It's best to have a select committee and look at it into a holistic view because there are other 32, 33 amendments which have some other implications like the role of SCZ, the type of SCZ and then some definitional items and then the control and ownership and also issues relating to, you know, the standing committee made certain recommendations. We need to dwell on that also, the health insurance, how to link it and then the uh, agents the regulators right. and also there are other issues called the tribunals. You know, all I think is, you know, it's, it's a lot of issues need to be discussed which have been subsequently made as uh, Rita Brata said from 2008 to 2014 there's lot of, you know, financial uh, transformation in the world. We need to take stock of what is happening, what is the impact of uh, these FIIs, okay. F that's what we, 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 let us, let us not jump the gun, let us see how this, you know, uh, select uh, committee can, can have a look at it and okay. come back. Okay, that's well, Poranjoy? Okay. Poranjoy, first issue is about mm. this entire FII. Stuff. One minute. If, if, if this FII thing which the UPA, NDA government is proposing is brought in, what will be the consequences? One minute. Before I do, I'm going to answer your question, but let me just take one step back and then just look at the politics of the whole thing. It was for the first time in December 1999 when the Insurance Regulatory uh, and Development Authority Act was passed by both houses of parliament. Right. Remember Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee was in power. Remember those were the days for the first time really the Congress and the Bharatiya Janata Party came together to pass them. At that time this debate was there. The BJP at that time said 49%, Congress right. said 26%, then the issue of Indian ownership, foreign ownership, all this came. But finally it says 26% foreign ownership and Indian, the privatization of the national, of what was then the nationalized insurance sector happened. Now, look at the hypocrisy. In December 2011, the head of the Parliament Standing Committee, Parliament Standing Committee on Finance, Mr. Yashwan Sinha, who belongs to the Bharatiya Janata Party, he proposes 26%. Yes. And then the Congress is on the other side. So I find that, you know, there's, there's a huge amount of sort of uh, hypocrisy on the part of both these parties. When you're in power, you say something, and when you're not in power, I will, I will just, okay. no, I just, second, I just want to mention what the, what the standing committee recommendation was. 2011, you're mentioning the standing yes. committee of uh, Eshwan Sina committee, which That's you're right. talking about. It said further hike, in, further hike means it was 26%, 49% was what the UPA okay. government had suggested in the 2008 amendment bill, which was being looked into by the standing committee. The standing committee said, 
further hike in foreign direct investment may not be in the interest to the Indian insurance industry. This, it was a very the government should consider statement. the alternate route of tapping domestic capital markets for raising the capital Precisely. required for the growth of Precisely. the Precisely. So they said that if these insurance companies need money, they should raise funds from the public. Now, now this whole issue of FDI, FII, there's no doubt that foreign direct investment is a stable kind of investment which comes and remains. Foreign institutional money, which is invested in stocks and shares, comes and goes as quickly depending on the state of the stock markets. Now, earlier it was direct and indirect. That means you could go through another company. Now you're clearly specifying it's FII. Now the counter-argument, the Bharati Janata Party is saying, look, the control remains in Indian hands. It remains essentially Indian insurance company. But I think when you move away from the politics and look into the economics of the issue, there you get into a series of issues. First... Is this good for the long-term economic interest of the country? After all, should the government have greater control over the nation's savings? An insurance policy is like a long-term contract. World over, insurance money or money from insurance companies is used for longer, long-term investment right. like an infrastructure, infrastructure project. Yeah, so. Now, that's one part. Secondly, you are arguing that just by allowing these companies to bring in capital, the foreign companies, remember in their own country, their business is in a mess. What, what Ritra Pratha just mentioned, 2008, the world's biggest insurance group, AIG, America Insurance Group, collapsed. It had to be bailed out. The variety of reasons, improper regulation. But all these companies now are obviously looking at a country like India. Why are they looking at it? Because they see India's demographic profile. They see a lot of young people. They see the insurance business here growing. But the point is, are these foreign in, in, uh, insurance companies, how concerned are they about the poor Indians? Answer, no. They are looking at the rich guys. They are looking, I mean, there was a study done, the average annual premium no, for yeah, a policy. We will not, we, we will not go into that uh, right now. But let us stick to some of the amendments which have been proposed right. by the th thing. Rita Bharato, the uh, other... I agree, I want to mention one point that I mentioned earlier also. This is an invitation. This is a red carpet for these bailout companies. They, they will come in. No, I we just are, want. No, no, we are, we are, we are, we are sticking to the. We are, no, no, no. Let us try to stick to the I, fact. I just, Does this bill need to go? Why should it go to a joint select committee? You will, you will need to uh, justify that because the government says we will. It is not necessary to go to the joint select committee. Paranjay, I want you to address that issue also. See, 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 the point is very simple. If it goes to a joint select committee, then the process will drag on for a long period of time. If it is rejected by the Rajya Sabha, then the government has the option of calling for a joint sitting of parliament and then it hopes to pass the bill. It has a clear majority in the Lok Sabha. In the Rajya Sabha, it doesn't have a majority. But if you have a joint sitting joint of parliament, will... so this is obviously See, the look, government's strategy. If the government decides to take this route, how will the Congress react to it? And do you think, do you think that the Congress, your party and the other opposition parties which are opposed to getting this bill passed na right now, let you, it come, we'll that see. I don't think the government would be wise enough to take that route because uh, I hope that uh, the wisdom prevails on them. There should be a consensus. The only consensus is through the institution of what is called uh, uh, a parliamentary uh, route, which is the select committee in this case. I think that's what the, we sensibly feel that this should be examined. Then they can have... So many routes. Another one month, I mean, events are not going to fall. One or two months. Okay. You know, yes. one point I want to make. You know, he's talking about a consensus. The fact of the matter is, there is no consensus, not only across yeah, the political I have spectrum, to, I have to, I have to make but even within the Bharatiya Janata Party and the RSS, the no. Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh and the Swadeshi Jagran Manj and the Bharatiya Mazdur Sangh, they are uh, opposed to, uh, I mean, the trade union wing, which is right. affiliated there, there is to the Sambadivar. No, before, Ritha Prithu, before you talk, I just want to make it clear that, you know, we tried our level best to get somebody from the BJP or the government to come and, you know, tell us why why it is necessary for it to be passed as quickly as possible yeah. as they are depending. But unfortunately, we are not able to get anybody from the BJP or from the government. Yes. See, uh, we are also nine parties in the Rajya Sabha. As far as Rajya Sabha is concerned, nine political parties have demanded that must go to the select committee. Our position, as far as the position of the CPIM is concerned, our position is very clear. The points I am raising here, this is a party position, I am representing the party. The same points will be raising in the select committee. Let there be a discussion. First of all, when this entire thing is BJP is not here, but from the media what we are getting, BJP is telling, number one, when this 49% increase of this 49% is proposed, they are telling that there is a uh, you there is a low insurance penetration. Yeah, yeah. That's why 49 percent. There's only three percent. Uh, no, then in America here it is correct. Three, life insurance penetration in India is 3.1. But you want to bring in companies from outside America. It is 3.2, 2.9 in Canada, 3.1 in Germany, 
So this is the situation. Now secondly, another uh, point that has been mentioned that highly developed uh, technological base is necessary. Now in India, this insurance sector is, these uh, companies are also highly te technologically right. developed. No, you just also... Uh, no, just these are all these what? are all issues. I'm sure you, you, your party and you will all be taking it up in the, in the select committee, if there is a select committee or if there is a discussion in the party. I just want no, to look I, at, I, I just want to look at some of the amendments which no, have been proposed. Uh, just I need one you point people, I want yes. to make before that. Just this is, uh, I am quoting from a report, the World Bank supported growth commission under the chairmanship of Nobel laureate Michael Spence observed, our view is that foreign saving is an imperfect substitute for domestic saving, including public saving to finance the investment okay. a booming economy requires. Okay. So this is a World Bank report, a Nobel right. laureate. Right. It says, is, we, have, we have spoken about the foreign, the shareholding pattern, whether it should be direct investment or FIIs, which the government is proposing, about which there seems to be the biggest yeah. opposition so far from every part, from every uh, quarter. So but the Congress says it's a substantial change. It's a substantial change. It's a minor change. Exactly. And so there is another... Exactly saying we are willing to go in for a minor amendment. There is another thing which says power of the insurer to call a life insurance policy into question. This is a very important as far as the you know, insurer is concerned. Anybody, you or me, if we have to call it in, 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 into question, the, the UPA's uh, amendment had proposed that you, know, you, can, you can do it within five years. This, this bill says... Does that it is three years? It, it will be three years. Three years. So this is, a, is, is this a substantive thing? And is, is this, minute, is, this, this is a positive development. You know, see, the point you must note is that you can argue that the Life Insurance co Corporation needs to improve the way it yes. works. You can argue that the various general insurance companies which come under the General Insurance Corporation should also improve their function. But when you look at the track record, when you look at the Insurance Regulation and Development Authority, you will find there have been more complaints about the private insurance than the public sector. In other words, the people who are buying these insurance policies... Right. They are not satisfied with the services of even the private guys. So both sides need to improve. So but the no, argument the, the that by bringing is, in pri 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 foreign yeah, money, yeah, yeah. you are going to improve the quality. That is, you know, that's another story. That's another that. story. But you know, here, five, as an insurer, as, a, as, a, as somebody who has taken in a policy, I will have the, should I have five years to question, you know, whatever, if, there, if something goes wrong, if the in, insurance company doesn't service me properly, or should I have three years? I think you should have three years. Why not? I mean, it's, it's a, I think it's a consumer-friendly move. No, five. Okay. I mean, uh, Silam. It's okay. That those. That those, is not a big. That's thing. not a big thing. That's no, not I'm a big thing. One other one of the things about the operation of foreign insurers in insurers in India. This is a, this is an important thing. A registered foreign insurer can conduct insurance business in a SEZ. This was what the original Act said. In a SEZ, the government may exempt any insurer operator insurer operating in SEZ from application of any of the provisions of the Act. This was the Act as as it existed, and then your uh, so UPA standing committee did not make any recommendation. I think no, the the standing committee's recommendation of the standing committee observed that permitting unregistered foreign entities to operate in SEZs would not serve the purpose of developing a well-regulated insurance market in India and would, India. would risk yeah. domestic capital flight. <coughs> I, I don't think the 2014 amendment, the, the, the present government's amendment says, deletes provisions of the bill and reinstates provisions of the act. Oh, so that's so it, the is, it, is, it is keeping the original act, whatever was there in the original act, which, meant, which said a registered foreign insurer can conduct insurance business in SEZ. The government may accept any insurer operating in SEZ from application of any of the provisions of the act. So no provisions of the act will be applicable. To a okay, I, 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 I think who I, I operates think in an SEZ. I think this this is a blanket, <coughs> uh, blanket, blanket controversy. Thing. Thing. You can't give it to. No, yeah. I just want to mention one data here. No, there are uh, several uh, such things which need a little more in-depth study. Let them have a look at it. The select committee can look at all these things and come up. After all, give them three uh. months. Yes, yes. There is a difference between public sector companies and private sector companies. Right. You look at the, this is the IRDA report. April to July 2004, as published in National Delhi's, there have been 10,819 complaints by consumers against the HDFC Standard Life, more than 6,000 against the Billa Sun Life. All this private. No, no, we are not. We are not. We, we, we. I mean, this is a separate debate altogether. No, no, no. How effective we, a private insurer? No, no, no. no. I, why I am pointing out when this function, uh, this question of operating in SEZ come. Yes. No regulation. I am mentioning this because there will be a. I mean, 
open space for these private players. Right. That I am trying to that, point that's, out. That's a you point know, well taken. As far as the capital requirements are concerned, uh, Paranjoy, it says the, the act, initially, the, the act said the minimum equity capital requirement is 100 crores for life insurance or general insurance and 200 crores for a person exclusively in the business of reinsurance. The, the, proposed, uh, the proposal of the UPA government was the mi minimum equity capital requirement is 50 crores. The standing committee said it should be 100 crores. But the UPA, say, the, uh, the, the present government says, the present government is agreeing with the UPA and saying it should be, minimum capital requirement should be only 50 So crores. basically you are actually, this is what the industry is wanting, you're going with that. Promoting. Right. So you're not going with what your own standing committee, headed by your own party leader, Mr. Yashwan Sinha, had agreed. So in a sense, you're paving the way. And then secondly, I think that is the, what, what is possibly equally controversial as this whole FI, FI, FDI, FII, is the thing about SEZ. Yes. That means once you're in a special economic zone, none exactly. of these then, no, none of these rules, then, then you might as well be operating out of Mauritius or, you, or Cyprus or the, or the United States of America. So in effect, you're, you're like, uh, all, all the laws of this country are not applicable. So I, I don't think there's going to be a consensus. This on, is basically on, on a red carpet, no? You have no hmm. regulations. People operating in SEZ will be have no, will we'll have have no, no regulations. That, that, is what, that is what it has been proposed. There is another thing, appeals against IRDA decision. This is, this is also interesting. The UPA had, had said the government can, the, the original act said that the of, officer can be appealed in the high court within whose jurisdiction, jurisdiction the insurer is registered or is stated. But the UPS, uh, EPA had kept it appealed in the high court with the, you know, had maintained it. But now the present thing says that securities appellate tribunal, I, I suppose the, uh, the, the decision. The SAT, the Securities Appellate Tribunal, will you can uh, appeal to the security, Securities Appellate, Appellate Tribunal, not to the High Courts. This is also another change which has been brought about. I don't know how, uh, uh, you know, no, this, this is going this to be... This may not be, you know, you know that's what the, the Standing Committee also recommended. Standing something. Committee also has recommended that the Securities <coughs> Appellate that, Tribunal should be the, the appealing that, authority. That, that is to reduce the pressure in, on the on High the court. courts. Maybe, on the, that's okay. That, that uh, the composition, how, how many members... And this is, that, this, that, is, this is another specialist whether there or not. That constitution of that tribunal is also important. Paranjay, there is another. Uh, this thing. is a relatively minor issue. This is a relatively. But, but that, that, whether the, your first, about your investment first of appeal. Investment of assets. Is another yes, provision. This is a very important provision. Investment of assets. The original act said investments in immovable property outside India shall be excluded from the calculation of statutory investments to be made by an insurer in order to meet his liabilities on account of matured claims of life insurance policies. Okay, the, the, the UPA had proposed that the investments in immovable property outside India shall be excluded. It, it maintained the th same thing. From the calculation of statutory investments to be made by a life insurer to meet his liabilities account of matured claims or a general. It had maintained the, what the act had said. But now the, the present government says, the incidentally standing committee made no recommendations about this. The, the present government say, the present government's uh, amendment says investments in immovable property outside India shall be included in calculation of statutory investments. Here it was it should be excluded. Here it says it will be included in statutory investments to because, be made by life insurance. Because at what the, does this mean? Because this is basically what the foreign investors want. Because this is what the foreign insurance companies want. That the insurance they make outside India should be included uh, in, in terms of calculating... So investments in immobile property they have made outside, outside, yes. outside India. Correct? Right. So, so this is what they want. I mean, loss for the tax, ta tax loss for... Uh, you're, you're sweetening the deal essentially yeah. for them. So this is, this, this, is, this, is, this you think is sweetening of the deal? Yeah. See, see Girish, I, I think the basic issue needs to be discussed. Right. What will a higher foreign insurance or foreign direct ins uh, investment cap on these companies do? This is what the foreign direct. Uh, this is what the foreign insurance companies want. The question that people people are raising questions: Will this improve the efficiency of these Indian insurance companies who are operating in India? Will it provide a better service to right. customers? Will they reach out to more people, including poor people? You know that. I mean, there is no evidence whatsoever to indicate that this will happen. I'll give you one 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 set of statistics. The average annual premium 
for a life insurance policy issued by the private in uh, insurance is roughly 60,000 rupees. Against this, the LICs are, uh, average is about 9,000 rupees. Right. In other words, the life insurance corporation is still concerned about the small person, the relatively, exactly. uh, the, 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 uh, relatively underprivileged sections of Indian society than the foreign insurance guys. They want to make their money. That is but logical. They want to improve their profits in their own country. That the situation is not good. There's a recession going on. So they want to come to the India. And they see India as a growing market. As I said earlier, the, the fact that there are so many young people in this country, compared to their country, this is a growing market for them and they are eyeing this uh, market less seriously and the government seems to be wanting to, you know, pave the uh, way for them. Rita Brutha, finally, you know, you think that if, if the government insists on pushing through this bill without, you know, sending it to the select committee, what would be the, what would be, yeah, you know, the, the CPM's uh, role, in, role in this, how would you react to this and you think that this is something which has to go to the select committee. See, the role of CPM has a limited strength, both in Lok Sabha and in Rajya Sabha. But as far as opposition is concerned, because this entire thing, what Paranjayada was telling, will lead to the dilution of ownership of PSU, of, the, of our general insurance companies. It will compel them to sell their equity in the market. So not only the question of protesting in the parliament, inside the parliament. Yesterday, so on Monday, the bill was supposed to come. bill was supposed to be tabled. All the unions, including this BJP union, BMS, uh, insurance unions, they have gone on strike. Right, including the BMS. That is in uh, Silam. Very quickly, last words. What? Do, how do you? No, think I think. The, how uh, do you think the government should go about now, in, in the light of what kind of amendments the which they are proposing? I think the government should give an opportunity for the for the house to to discuss uh, within uh, a select committee and then come back in the interest of what uh, you know is made out. You know, in India, we need the more coverage and to make our own Indian insurance companies more effective and efficient and also give customer satisfaction to a large number so that this insurance sector grows. So I, I think in the interest of that, we need this to be discussed in a select committee. Okay. In we have large number of amendments with a lot of ramifications. That's Okay. What I, I think on that note, we need to end. The, the government incidentally was supposed to have an all-party meeting today to discuss this issue about how it should go about uh, this, this, uh, this amendment bill. But it has put it off to tomorrow. We'll have to wait and watch what will be the outcome of this all-party meeting which is expected to be held tomorrow by the government. Meanwhile, as we have discussed today, there are, I mean, it, the amendments which have been proposed seems to be, some of them seems to be substantive enough to to need a, some amount of relook, but whether it should be done at the at the discussion level or in the in the house or it should go to a select committee or not, we will have to wait and watch what will happen. Thanks to all my guests, Mr. J.D. Silam, Rito Broto Banerjee, and Paranjoy Goa Takurta. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in Big Picture, same time tomorrow.